Oh, hey, uh, let's talk about, um, uh, doing conditional statements. Just kidding. Hey, let's talk about conditional statements. So a conditional statement is a really simple idea, and it's the whole basis behind computer programming working, basically. So what a conditional statement means is a section of code that you either do or don't do based on a condition. So imagine if I had a little chunk of code that said system dot out dot print line. Yay! Uh, maybe I don't always want to do that. Maybe I only want to say yay if something good happened. And I don't want to say yay if something bad happened. So I want to have a condition that I check to determine whether or not I should run that code. Well, in Java, the way we do that is really simply with a statement called if. So we write the word if in lowercase, and then a big set of parentheses. And inside these parentheses, we put a condition. So for instance, if 3 is less than 4, print out yay. Yay, 3 is less than 4. Numbers make sense. Woohoo. Now, that's not really a useful condition statement because 3 is always less than 4. What's really useful is if we use variables that can change based on when we use the program. You know, otherwise, 3 is less than 4, well, that's always true. So there's no point in making this conditional statement at all. But if I were to say something like, if your age is greater than, say, 16, then we might say, yay, you can drive a car if you get your license. Well, we have a variable up here, int age equals, and maybe we have a method that gets your age, maybe you type it in. But now we have the computer actually thinking. It checks your age and determines whether or not you should see this statement. So let's do uh, a more interesting version of this. What if I were to tell you to give me a word, so string word equals get word from user. All right, so I have a little piece of code that's going to say, go get some text from the person at the keyboard. And I might tell them something like, uh, type in a verb that ends in ing, or type in your name, or type in the password to see this program. Well, I might want to check to see that the word has an ing at the end, or it is the value that I asked for, or maybe the word's a certain length. And if you looked at the other video on string methods, we know Strings can do things. They can tell you about themselves. So what if we did this? What if I had a password, and the password was cat? I said, hey, you can only see this code, this super secret stuff, super duper secret. You can only see this if you know the password, which is cat. Well, how am I going to check that? Now, I could do this. Word equals equals. So two equal signs to say compare equals equals cat. But this is not going to work because if you remember in the string video we said strings are references to something like cat. So if I say word, is word the same as this? Well word is an arrow so it's not going to work. Instead we have to dereference word so we use that little period and then we actually use a method that strings already know how to do called equals. Hey word, are you the same as cat? If you are, show my super duper secret. Now, what if they typed it in wrong? You know, right now, no matter what happens, we get down here. Uh, so code that always happens. But maybe I want to say, if they type in the wrong password, something like, too bad, you don't get to see my secret, ha ha ha. Well, we can use a kind of second part of the if statement called an else statement. Else, now this does not get a condition. So else, there's a code block. And maybe we print something like, ha ha, nice try, because our computer laughs at people. So an else statement says, if the if isn't true. So if this is true, do this. Otherwise, do that. 
So this is binary. You do one or the other. Let's say I wanted to uh, make my program a little bit fancier, and instead of just saying no matter what, you have, ha ha, nice try if you get it wrong. What if I wanted to say, you know, if you get it wrong, I'll give you a second chance. Or what if I said, uh, if you get it wrong, but you get it wrong a certain way, uh, you know, I, I, I want to give you a second chance. So maybe we do something like this. Maybe we say, else if. So if they're wrong, but I want to check again, I might say word dot equals ignore case for cat. Because maybe what happened is they wrote cat, but they spelled it with a capital C and I spelled it with a lowercase C or something along those lines. Maybe here I'm going to, you know, instead of just teasing, maybe I'll say something like, hmm, herm, close, but check caps lock. All right. But then I could still say otherwise. Otherwise, ha, ha, ha. Now, uh, this is called an if-else chain or an if-else ladder. So I could string a whole bunch of these together. For instance, if you wanted to calculate a grade in a program, you might say, if you have above a certain score, you have an A+. Plus. Otherwise, if you're between this and this, you get an A. Otherwise, if you're between this and this, you get an A-. minus. So you can make these as long as you want. Typically, you don't want to throw too many in there just because it gets clunky. But here we have a three-step chain. If you hit the first condition, you go here. Otherwise, if you get the second condition, you go here. Otherwise, you go there. But an if-else chain, you're guaranteed only one of them. As opposed to if I did this, if, if else. Now I have an if statement that says, if I got it perfect, say the secret. Well, even if I got it perfect, I'm going to go down and now check this line of code. And if it's perfect, well, it's perfect even if I ignore the case. So then I'm going to get this message which doesn't really work. So we have to be careful when we use if and else statements to make sure that the logic of when we say if, when we say else, when we say else if, uh, makes sense. But there's a good introduction to conditional statements, so go try playing with them. Bye now.